Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to IKG's Wisdom Wednesday for December 2022, uh, 2021. We had a special uh, Wisdom Wednesday series for this month. I hope some of you were able to join us last week as we had a special presentation by our very own founding director, Anthony Browder. And this week we have our traditional Wisdom Wednesday presentation with Inwabweze Okoye. So thank you all for joining us. And as we always do, we like to start off by acknowledging you all for joining us and just shouting out some of the cities that are represented uh, this evening. So we have Baltimore, LA, Missouri, Pittsburgh, Queens, New York, Anchorage, Alaska, uh, Maryland's in the house, Bethesda, Texas, of course, the DMV always in the house. We have Jackson, Mississippi, and I'm calling them all out. Chesapeake, uh, let's see, Albury. Uh, we have New York, of course, DC, Louisiana, New York City, Atlanta, New Jersey. Uh, let's see who else we have. Portland, Oregon. We have Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. San Diego. So we're all over the place as always. Silver Spring, uh, DC, of course, California, Orlando, and we're just happy. Greetings from London. All right. So we're just really happy that you all are able to join us. Um, still scrolling through. We got Richmond, we got Minneapolis, Harlem, uh, Port of Spain, Cleveland, Chi Town is in the house. Hawaii is here. Yes, Hawaii. All right, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We are so happy that you have made it a point to join us this evening. So I just wanna tell you a little bit about IKG. Wisdom Wednesday is a monthly, a free monthly lecture series that is normally held here in Washington, DC, but due to the pandemic, we've gone virtual and it has given us an opportunity to take Wisdom Wednesday International via Zoom webinar. And we are so happy that you are with us. But again, these events occur every third Wednesday of the month. And if you are just now finding out about us, we encourage you to go to our website, IKG Cultural Resource Center org, and sign up for our listserv. And that way you will get all the information that you need of all of the various events, activities, trips, that IKG puts on. And um, later in a moment, we will add the website to the chat. So you can go directly there and sign up for our listserv. So tonight's presentation, we are very thrilled to bring to you in Wabweze Okoye, speaking on African understanding of mobilizing psychic power, true astrology, ritual, and joy. Okoye shares with us that Africans from time immemorial have utilized the cosmos to organize their sense of time. The sun, moon, planets, and stars were seen as heavenly clocks, clocks keeping our spirit in tune with the rhythm of divine forces influencing us seasonally. Tonight's presentation aims to uncover the foundational meaning of being in tune with the seasons astrologically. Tonight's presentation will also touch on the essence of how to spiritually generate personal power and direct it to heal yourself and empower your goals and aspirations. Tonight's speaker again is Enumabueze Okoye, and he has been studying the ageless wisdom tradition for over 20 years, with particular focus on indigenous ideas of healing prior to the arrival of Europeans. Okoye is a priest of the Pan-African religious order called Asara Set Society. He is also apprenticing with a Debia, traditional medicine priest of the Igbo people, of Southeast Nigeria. 
Okoye has been initiated into a Taoist tradition and has been instructed in the medical, magical, and ritualistic traditions of the Wu, shamans of China, as well as being conversant in many forms of energy and martial art methods. Okoye has recently relocated from Maryland to Hawaii, where he continues to share his gifts of teaching on how to reconnect spiritually to the body for holistic healing, overthrowing disease while creating practical healing regimens for those who are inter interested. So please join me in welcoming Brother Okoye. And it's all yours. Thank you, dear. Um, so I wanna say a big thank you to the Most High and the ancestors uh, for allowing this gathering to happen. Um, I'm just serving really as an instrument of that um, consciousness. And I'm very, I'm very grateful to be here. Um, the IKG, it was Tony Brothers book. I remember reading it in high school um, as a freshman or as a sophomore and it was, it woke me up, you know, it woke me up to these kind of levels that we're gonna be speaking on today. So I just feel it's the ultimate pleasure to be able to, um, you know, to have received that knowledge and wisdom and to be able to do my best to return um, back to the hands of the people. So thank you everybody so much. Um, how shall we start? I think uh, I'm gonna spotlight my camera just so everything is good here. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about <clears throat> astrology a little bit and psychic power a little bit and joy a little bit. And just to, you know, within an hour and a half format, this is something I could talk all day long about, um, <clears throat> but just trying to keep it brief within a small time format. Uh, this is a time period being that it's the winter solstice to allow ourselves to go inwards. Right, we all have things that we're looking to accomplish. We all have ideas, aspirations, inspirations, things of this nature we're looking to accomplish, to achieve. And the only question is, how do we do this? Right, you might need to be, you might be in a pinch and rent is late, or, you know, the jobs aren't coming, you've applied online and nothing's happening, you know. Um, you know, you see that woman over there in that yellow and green dress, she looks fly and you try week after week to try to get her attention, <laughs> but no chips, <laughs> you know, something, something's not, it's not happening. The energy's not happening. She's not looking your way. All right. So like, these are the kind of things that we have things in life that we're looking to achieve, to accomplish. And sometimes it's just not enough to tune in to your thoughts or use your own energy. You Sometimes you have to yield to the energies of the heavens above and the earth beneath. So I just wanna put everyone a little bit on the clock today of how we can do those things. And I'm gonna kind of curtail this talk specifically to this time period we're in right now, which is the winter season um, with the most important days of the year approaching, which is the winter solstice. So. In, in traditional African spirituality, traditional African culture, um, that winter solstice time period of all the 365 days of the year, those four days are perhaps the most vital days, the days we must keep the most um, <clears throat> attention to, paid the most attention to. So we're gonna kind of get into that without further ado. And I'm just gonna share my screen a little bit and uh, I'm gonna look for a particular slide. So you all can see this, correct? Yes, we can. Okay. So you see that these are priests and priestesses, well, mainly priestesses here, and they're involved in ritual, right? I think the, uh, you know, the this would be in a comb, in the, the Ghanaian, the Akan tradition. 
and everything that is being demonstrated here is teaching you something about nature, about life, right? You've seen, you know, priestesses dressed in white, the color is significant. You see this clay looking substance, this whitish upon the skin, that is significant. What she's holding, what she's carrying, these plants, these herbs, everything is significant to ritual, right? Or if you go to my land, Nigeria, you see, uh, forgive me, it's a little small, but you can still see that this is uh, what we call ebonu, which is the ram. And the ram, you can see the horns, you see the color black, the color red, the color white, so we call these spirit masquerades in Nigeria, right? Initiates, only initiates can be inside of these things. And the idea is when you don these masks, your dominant personality fades to the background while the spirit of what you're invoking or inviting comes to the foreground, right? And these masks come out based on the calculations of what the people need in the community and also what the season or what the heavens are bestowing, right? So Africans from time immemorial have always sought to unite heaven upon earth, unite heaven upon earth. And essentially that is what ancient Egypt was all about. Um, you know, as one example of a culture that successfully was able to unite the idea of bringing heaven into earth, bringing your spirituality, your spiritual philosophy into your earthly deeds, into your society, right? It's very telling that we're in a culture now in the Western world, which seeks to separate heaven from earth <laughs> because maybe they don't wanna be caught by that which they consider their heaven um, in their misdeeds that they're doing here upon the earth. <laughs> So anyways, um, I'll let you all decide that. I'm not gonna judge tonight. Um, so this next slide, it's a, just a quick glyph detailing, um, let me get this out of the way actually. This is a quick slide that's detailing um, energy and its transformations in these elements, right? So in scientific thinking, you have to be able to group things in a proper order, in a proper manner. So we have four elements or four seasons, and then we have a season that's in between those four seasons that allows for the transition or the transformation into a new season. For instance, we have winter now, we're in winter now. After winter will come the spring. For our winter's energy, which is cold and moist, to transition into a hot and moist, which is considered the spring. We have the heat, not quite as hot as summer, but it's definitely hotter than winter. That's that's hot energy category, category, but you're still carrying the moisture, the water from the winter. So it's a mixture, right? So what allows this transition from winter to spring is what we call earth, right? And then the spring energy goes and transforms into the summer where it loses the water and becomes dry energy, right? And then the autumn hits and you lose some of that heat from the summer. It's not quite as hot as it was in the autumn, um, but the dryness is still there. But then what has, what has to happen? Nature has to re-moisturize. It has to, we're going into hibernation. We're going into um, a time of reflection. And to reflect, you need that water element. That's why winter is so necessary. A lot of people have a hard time reconciling the idea that in winter time, you have to go to sleep. Or you, you don't have as much to do because it's dark and you know it's a little bit cold. But that energy, especially if you're in this part of, the, this part of our world, and I'm on the East Coast here in Maryland. Um, this time of the world is this time of the year is essential because 
that coldness and that darkness is enticing you to stay indoors and to go within, right? The summertime is about getting out, being extroverted. A lot of activity external. The wintertime, you internalize your consciousness. So the seasons, if you follow the seasons, if you're in harmony with the seasons, it will kind of teach you the way to go. And in astrology, this is the same way, all right? So you see this glyph. This is the original cross. Some of you may be Christians in the uh, audience here. And you hear a lot about the cross, the holy cross. And I'm presenting you, this is one of the earliest ideas um, of the cross. You see the up, down, vertical axis and the left, right, horizontal axis. This is the original ideas of the cross. It was dealing a lot with astrology. All right, and let's go a little deeper into that. Uh, forgive me, I think I have good eyes, but that's very, very small. <laughs> Let me see if I can blow this up just a tad bit. All right, uh, that helps a little bit. Um, so let me lean on in. You can also Any use a magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah, everyone bring out your binoculars or your magnifying glasses at this point for this slide. Uh, oh, oh, you mean, oh, my uh, actual magnifying glass. Let me see if I have one of those features here. I don't know where that is, but I'll just read it to you. So you see the, again, these are those four elements, that same cross. You see fire here, water here, air, and we have earth here. This is um, a little bit of a different idea, but <clears throat> everyone understands that they have a sign, right? You have um, an astrological assignment. When you were born, you know, you, a particular sign was hovering in the, was, was present in the air, in the sky, the alignment, the coordinates. Like for instance, I was born December 30th. So those who know astrology fairly well will understand you ask me what my sign is, I'm going to reply Capricorn, right? So in this categorization, which is a little different from the last categorization, that's considered an earth sign, right? Um, you have other, um, you have other earth signs here. You see that you have Virgo and Taurus, which complete the earth and earthly categories, right? Across from that, you're looking here at air signs where you're seeing Libra, you're seeing Gemini, you're seeing Aquarius, right? So if you're one of those, hey, what's my sign? I'm Libra, you know that that represents air. Um, here in the water, you're looking at Pisces, you're looking at Scorpio, you're looking at Cancer, that represents your water. And the complement of water is fire, and fire you're dealing with Sagittarius, you're dealing with Aries, and you're dealing with the lion, Leo, right? So um, those ideas you want to keep in mind because when someone says, what is your sign? Uh, someone just give me their sign. Tell me what your sign is. You can type it in the chat or just tell me what sign is. All right, if no one wants to talk, I'll just, I'll just use... Uh, <laughs> I'll just use my, I'll just use this um, cancer then, okay? So if someone's a cancer sign, medically, what does that mean to me? Or ritualistically, what does that mean to me? That if you're a water sign, if you were to engage in, and you say you needed, um, so cancer deals with the breasts, it deals with the, or the chest, it deals with the stomach, right? The digestive system. So most likely the sign you're in, you already have some, um, you're predisposed to some weaknesses in these areas, right? You're predisposed. Even, gen it's almost like genetically predisposed. Why? Because what determines, what astrology is informing you, what your astrology is informing the energy that is carried inside of your soul upon birth, right? That comes from the heavens. From the earth comes your, which are your parents, your bone structure, your skeletal system, your body, your physical, your physicality. And, you know, 
I'm Igbo man. And in Nigeria, where we're from, we say that there's really only two divisions that make up this individual that we call ourselves. One is more, more, M M U O more, which is spirit, and then Madu M M A D U, which is like the physical being, right? Some could say a human being, right? So you know, Akala Mo Akala Madu, which is I'm part spirit, I'm part man, and that's my makeup. That man aspect of me comes from my parents through sexual intercourse. The sperm and the egg met, had the zygote. Nine months later, I popped out, <laughs> right? And then what is the function of my soul which inhabits this flesh? That comes from your heavens, that comes from the sky, that comes from your astrology, right? So you have to learn to mix these two. That's what we're dealing with when dealing with astrology. We're talking about the energy that vibrates in your soul that gives forth your expression of um, emotions your ways of thinking um, and eventually will translate into your behavior so we're talking about a cancer someone with cancer energy they had a lot of um, this water energy in them and the way the water energy of that season hits them it affects the digestive system it affects the breasts right the chest um, so that would be something in terms of ritual, you may want to then look at things that are of the water element, you could use water, right, you could use, you could be someone who'd be into say, what they, you've all heard of holy water, and blessing of water, and you could be using medicines, you could be putting essential oils in holy water, maybe digestive herbs, or digestive oils like essential oil, fennel, fenugreek, ginger, anise, you understand? Um, holy basil, you can put these digestive herbs inside your holy water and then apply it to your belly, apply it to your breast, and it will give reinforcement to the area that's weak inside of you. What my contention is that a lot of times in these priesthoods and a lot of what we call shamanic practitioners, just for lack of a better word, people who travel in between the realms, you know, the Africans have been masters of this kind of uh, professions and vocations from time immemorial. Um, it is these things that they're looking at the astrology and they're looking at the person and they're saying, okay, is there a deficiency in the person in the earth? And they're going to use earthly means if there's a deficiency in the soul, or maybe the soul needs to be tapped into to strengthen the earthly means, you would use elements, right? You would use these elements to help you to heal. Say if you're coming from, let's just say you're coming from an air sign perspective, um, you could be, say you're a Libra, you know, or something like that. The air signs, you might be willing to use in ritual instruments that deal with the air. So for instance, um, this. let me stop sharing my, stop share, come back to me. Some of you may have seen this maybe before. So these are what are called vulture feathers, right? These are vulture feathers. And in shamanic practices, generally they, you know, they're utilizing birds of prey um, because when you're looking to remove something from someone, you want that energy. So you want hawk feathers, you want eagle feathers, you want these predatory kind of animals, right? If you're dealing with the water energy, you might want shark teeth, you get me? Um, and so you could take something like this if you're an air sign. An air sign would be very amenable, right? This would be something that'd be very useful for you to remove stagnant energies that might be around you. Just simply brushing, you don't even have to touch the body, but just brushing over the energy field wherever you feel a disturbance. If you feel disturbance in the head, headaches, then 
bringing that energy up and swishing it out, right? So that's one way that we would be ritualistically utilizing what our sign is to help us to harmonize with that sign's energy, right? So, you know, you just wanna kind of look at that. And let me go back to the screen here. I'm just gonna kind of follow. So you have the breakdown of the signs and it's, it's kind of like a cross. In Chinese medicine, which its origins are essentially um, African, you know, the first dynasty, the Shang dynasty was the Africans, the quote unquote black Chinese. Um, and even before the Shang dynasty was assembled, China was a black land as proven by a, um, they had a geneticist the top geneticist in China, they were they gave him you know a lot of uh, money to discover the roots of the Chinese culture because they swore up and down that they were indigenous to the land of China, only to find genetically that the majority of those who classify themselves as Chinese today have African ancestry. An African mother is the source of the whole people that they call themselves call themselves today Chinese. Um, this glyph is very, very small again. Mm. All right, we're gonna bump that one. <laughs> well, I just want you, if you can see closely, if you can, those of you have those binoculars or those- oh, is that, If you go yes. up top, if you go up top, right by the green, go down. Yeah, oh, let me go back right here. Oh, Go that's down, the magnifying yeah. glass you're talking that's, about. Mm -hmm. The one that says plus, yeah. click on that. I gotta learn my tools here. There we go. Okay. Oh, it's a little oh, blurry. Still a little blurry. No. Okay, but that's a little better. So we're gonna deal with, let's look at this. Um, let's look at this chart and you can see this gray column where it says water. So the water inside of you, there's water signs we talked about earlier, right? Those water um, <clears throat> constellations or zodiac signs. And if you belong to any of those, or even if you don't, if you just know that um, the water energy inside of us energetically deals with the kidneys and the bladder system, right? The kidneys and the bladder energy system. And when you look here on this chart, you can see that if you want to strengthen your kidneys or you want to strengthen your water, what does your water deal with? It deals with the bladder, the bones, your body hair, your ears, your gums, your anus, your genitals, your teeth. What's left off here is even the brain, right? I'm gonna get off the screen here. because that's just a, <laughs> not the best looking screen. Um, so let me reemphasize. We're in the December, December, um, from December 6th to January, um, we're in the Capricorn energy. But the Capricorn and the astro astrological clock is positioned in this energy, even though it's an Earth sign, it's in this proximity of this water energy. That means that everybody on Earth right now, we're in this season where the winter time. Right, the winter time is able to. In the winter time, it gives us the the winter is telling us what we need to work on during this season. Right, so this season now it's a water sign, and in the water you can strengthen your kidney energy and your bladder energy, and these energies of the kidney and the bladder are very important because they allow you to become physical and really all physical issues that you have inside of you can be healed by strengthening these organs at this particular time right so that energy is something that you want to learn to cultivate within yourself so you have to ask yourself how do I strengthen my kidneys how do I strengthen my bladder and we have ways and means I'll give you a clue with regards to the season and wintertime 
energy is so deep in the earth that you can find essentially things that are fats, things that have a lot of fats inside of them um, will carry the energy of the season. So you can look to avocados, you can look to nuts, you can look to seeds. The energy will be much stronger in those things than they will be say in fruits or carbohydrates or in proteins, right? Carbohydrates are more prevalent in the spring season. Fruits, a raw food diet that many of you may espouse, more, it's more powerful, deliver, more powerfully delivered in the summertime. And then back again, carbohydrates in the autumn time. And then things that are seeds or deep roots, right? Going deep into the earth or even fermented foods. Because think about it, in the wintertime, what are most animals and creatures doing? They're hibernating. So they're not eating. So the winter time is really not a time to overeat, right? It's a time to kind of like give the digestive system a rest uh, while you're rebuilding. So you can eat. So generally like myself in the winter, I generally eat just one meal a day. I have a big meal, maybe around 12 or 1 p.m. And that will satisfy me for the fullness of the day. I don't really snack or anything. Then I'll drink tea to supplement that. Teas that strengthen the kidneys, right? Um, herbs that will strengthen the kidneys, right? I'm going to share some of those later today uh, before the end of the talk. So some of y'all just remind me if I forget. Um, well, I'll, I'll just give one right now. One is called, um, where's the chat here? Here it is. The chat, type this in. You might want to look into this. This is just the Chinese word for it, but it's um, Western is also going to be Sustanche. So you can see that. So Rosong Rong or is also known as Sustanche or Sustanche. If you're in the DC area, you can get this at a beautiful little herb store called the Blue Nile. All right. The Blue Nile has that herb in abundance. So that would be an herb that you can take. It's a little salty and salty taste has a correspondence with the winter season, with the water energy, with the kidneys and bladder. So what is what am I saying? If you have any kidney or bladder issue, meaning you have something going on with your bones, you have something going on with your skeletal system, you have something going on with your brain, you have something going on with your joints, arthritis, you have something going on with your knees, you have something going on with your lower back. You have something going on with the head on top of your, the hair on top of your head. You have something going on with your hearing. All of these are correspondences of the kidney, the bladder, the water energy. And this water energy, if you have, or even your sexual organs, the ability to reproduce, if you have something going on in any of those regions, this time period is the time period to restore and to regenerate those functions. Beyond any other time of the year, you can do it all times of the year, but there's certain time periods that are appointed. You know, the energy is just very open. It's like you just open the door and walk right through, no resistance. This is the time to develop your sexual power. This is the time to strengthen your skeletal system. This is the time to strengthen your brain, your hearing. Those low, those low back pains, those knee pains that you're subject to year after year, it's probably you're subject to them year after year because you're not observing the laws and the rules of this astrology, this water season. So you have to learn to get in tune with your water. And um, so this herb is one, is just is one um, example of something that's very, very nourishing to that. Um, the reproductive system to this whole water energy system. I'm going to give you some foods that you can eat. The water energy. You can have water cress, right? You can have figs. Can, can you make? Can you click on um, the chat to have it go to everyone? Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> yes, I, thank you. I was thinking it was going to everyone. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, so where do we leave off? Figs, 
uh, how do you spell sesame seeds? The black ones, right? Black sesame seeds. Um, so if you were to eat these foods, I'm just giving foods because food is like the most direct medicine, right? Some of you don't have the money to like hit up acupuncturists or uh, natural paths on a consistent or regular basis, but you do have the ability to go to your grocery store or your gardens, right, at all times. So in the old days, their food was truly their medicine. When we eat our fufu plate, <laughs> when I eat my fufu or my jollof rice, you best believe I have elements of these things in that jollof, in that bowl. Right, because I'm doing my best to be in harmony with the season. So things that carry a lot of water are things that will be strong for this kidney time period, uh, for this water time period, this winter time period. And then those things will help to strengthen your teeth, strengthen your bones, strengthen your skeletal system, right? Um, um, so I got the black sesame seeds, yeah or anything that's essentially kind of salty. So you can think one of the most salty foods we can eat is this, seaweeds. Well, I didn't spell it right. <laughs> but you get the idea. Seaweeds, All right? So your dulse, your hijake, your nori, that is a, that, that's a food that, even if you don't like that food per se, it's something that you can look to nourish yourself during this time period, right? And so in ritual, you know, if you're looking to strengthen your water, your kidneys, your ability, what is the water again? It's your ability to introvert your consciousness, to go within. What do I mean by that? It means that you can allow this world to disappear. You wanna think of, um, you wanna think of a plant, right? And in a plant, there's a part that you, of the plant you can see, that's that which is above the ground. But then what's beneath the, what's beneath the part that's visible? It's always gonna be your roots and that seed that it germinated from, right? So look at us, just take this metaphor and extend it to the human kingdom. There's a part of you that you can see right now. There's a part of me that you all are looking at but there's a part of me that you cannot see. Some will call that the soul, some will call that aspects of the spirit, um, your mental being, right? The part of you that has emotions running through it. These are the things that in the, this is the things in the, that you have to internalize your consciousness to tap into, to influence, right? The most ideal time to influence or reprogram, deprogram the nervous system is right now in the winter time, especially when the solstice comes. Because the winter solstice is the energy that allows essentially the presence of God to be magnified in our sphere of awareness. Those four days and four nights, it's almost like you're having a face-to-face -face conversation with God. Even as we're speaking face-to-face -face here, your own conception of your creator, you have that same ability, right? That happens only four times a year, summer solstice, winter solstice, and the equinoxes, the autumnal and the vernal, right? Or the fall and the spring equinoxes. So this is the time period where you want to be able to internalize. I see a question there, is winter a good time to fast? Those four days and four nights, which are essentially December 21 through 24, those are ideal times to fast, right? And because look what we're doing here. We're looking to get in touch with the power of the most high God, right? We're talking about ritual. We're talking about, we're looking at the signs. We're looking at the astrology. We're seeing the time of the waters upon us. And so what we want to do is it kind of shut down a lot of the external feeding so we can be internally fed, right? And this is the secret that many of the ancient cultures were abiding by, right? Ancient Egypt, ancient Nigeria, um, ancient Ghana, all these, uh, the Songhai Empire, these empires were living by these principles. We've come to the Western world, we've forgotten where our power comes from because we've been divorced and cut off from our culture. But you have to restore your culture. 
you know, no one's going to do it for you. You have to take time to do it for yourself. So what I'm trying to share with people here is that if you're able to tune in to your own water energy during this time period, you can have a face-to-face -face sit down with the most high God. And when you have that face-to-face -face sit down, you concentrate on what you need, meaning you project through your images, right? You pray within by projecting images or the words that you recite, the affirmations that you recite. Um, you have to be able to communicate to your spirit what it is you need. You have to, it's almost like, uh, anyone ever seen that movie, Batman? Um, Batman in Gotham City, right? And whenever they're looking for Batman, you know, what do they do? If they wanna find Batman, they have to project that, that, <laughs> right? That bat signal in the air. And Batman could be just like playing chess or eating lunch and looks up at the sky. <laughs> and so, oh, they need me. And Bruce Wayne becomes Batman and goes to the, wherever that light is. I know it's a crude metaphor, but it's kind of the same idea. For the most high, you have to use your image or your light, which is coming through your visualization, to project what you need. So that's going to move me into my next slide. Let me share my screen again. And skip over these for the time being. So this is just learn this new little trick right here. Okay. This is the uh, one of the African conceptions of the goddess of joy. Anyone know who this is? Yes, I think I silently heard someone say Oshun or Hetheru. The Greeks called Hathor, right? And it's the principle of joy within us. So what I mean by the goddess, it's not anything that's just kind of dancing and prancing around outside of you. These are complexes within your own spirit, faculties, spiritual faculties within your spirit, right? So because it's within your spirit, you have to learn how to invoke this energy. You have to go in and you have to go in. That's the in, invoke, invoke to call out. So you have to, you have to call this energy out of your spirit. That's invoking or inviting your, you know, if you want to use that word, you're inviting this energy out. And she's the representative of the joyful force. Her force is concentrated in the um, astrological sign of Taurus and Libra. So if you have Taurus or Libra energy, you have a predilection, you have a proclivity to express and arouse this force within you already. And you can see she has some interesting symbol symbology here, right? You see her smelling a rose. So that's giving you this kind of idea of a sensual energy. She has this sensual nature about her, right? And notice she has this sun in between these bull horns. So, you know, the bull or the ram is something that's very, very powerful, right? It's an animal that doesn't play games. It's it's a lot of energy, it's it has testosterone, tremendous. So that's giving you the idea of this sexual force. That's why she gets associated with, um, you know, tantric arts, reproduction, passion, desires, but you have to have all of this for yourself. Remember, we're looking beneath the plant now in the winter time. The winter time is dealing with the roots of you, the core of you, the seed of you, right? So the seed of you is house in your reproductive system. And what I'm suggesting to you, what the African mind is suggesting, the African genius is suggesting, I'm talking the people who built pyramids, the people who started civilization, the people who brought forth all medicine, all spirituality, right? What these people are trying to communicate to you is that if you want to heal yourself in this time period, you have to take care of your sexual energy, right? That's what the Libra and the Taurine energy is trying to teach you. Different ways to, so different angles. They're looking at one way is Libra, one way is Taurus. But they, when you read those, um, 
when you read the astrology on these and the charts on these and the body parts that they rule, like Libra is dealing with the, the balances, right? And the balances essentially are the ovaries and the testicles, right? That's what's being, that's the balance, you know? And are you gonna be too masculine in your expression or too feminine in your expression? Or, you know, how do you balance these expressions of these force that gives rise to your virility? Um, <clears throat> that's what this season is pretty much asking us. So the proper way to handle your energy in the winter season astrologically is to conserve your sexual energy, right? There's gonna be time for you to express that. But if you're dealing with, want to be dealing with serious healing or serious ability to mobilize psychic power, another way you can call psychic power is your magical ability, right? To be a magician or to be a priest or priestess that has effect in their rituals, effect in their prayers and their work for medicine then you have to be able to harness this sexual force. That sustantia herb that I gave you all is one such herb that feeds this energy directly, right? You could also use um, sarsaparilla. You could use damiana. Damiana is a direct correspondence with Hedhuru or Oshun or Hathor's energy. Uh, I guess I should put that in the chat. Um, let me put this in there. So if you all want some kind of ideas, Damiana or Sarsaparilla, don't quote me on that spelling. Um, but anyways, basically those herbs that would be considered aphrodisiacs, ashwagandha, and uh, something like that. These would be herbs that you can utilize that would empower you tremendously. So what am I saying? Just, just to make it plain again, this is the winter season. We have this water energy. The metaphor for water is the kidneys and bladder energy systems in our body. And these energy systems govern the core of you, right? Some of the first things that were built when you were created with the brain, the reproductive system, the bones, the skeletal system, that's the foundation. It doesn't go any deeper than that. The bone marrow, which the Westerners tell us that's where the DNA and the genetics are found. So we're talking about your lineage, your ancestry, all of this, the bones, right? The knees, teeth, which are the bones in the mouth, your hearing, if you're losing your hearing, right? It's all signs of that water energy. If you have low back pain, it's all signs of the water energy is draining from you. What does that mean? That means you're not gonna have effective rituals. You're not gonna have the power to make what you're willing in your mind. You're not gonna have the power to manifest and materialize that because that is what sexual energy is all about. Your sexual energy is about having the power to materialize what your spirit or your intention or your will is declaring, right? And what I'm suggesting is if you have that sexual energy and you match that with a very powerful, very clear, concise intention, very clear, concise, enlightened will, when you take that combination into this winter solstice time period, that's when you can mobilize psychic power to make you get that job, get that home, win those contracts to bring more abundance into your life, become inspired to get an idea that will move you forward, to move your family forward, move the community, your culture, your nation forward, right? But, you know, those are the things that you would want to to look at and that's how you mobilize the psychic power of this winter season, right? I'm just gonna stick on the winter primarily because um, I don't wanna go too deep into other things and because we don't have time. If it was a longer lecture, you know, we can go deeper, but I, I think at the present, let's just deal with the season we're in, which is a water season, right? Water because it's the winter time. Please spell or pronounced substance. Please spell it. Oh, sistanche, sistanche. 
like this. Um, when you take that herb sustanche, be advised, it will definitely um, make you horny. It will definitely, uh, I mean, that's just, a, they call it the desert Viagra. Right, so that kind of just gives you a clue. Um, <laughs> that gives you a clue. And look, Hedaru, she has horns. <laughs> so you're, she's about being horny. It's about that energy, but not expressing it outwards all the time. Sometimes you have to hold and preserve. Think about like when you have land, you have to let that land sometimes, if you're like a farmer, you have to let that land lay fallow. You have to give it a rest. You have to give it a time period to rest and recover and regenerate. That's what sleep is all about. If you're lacking, so the winter time is the time when you really wanna enjoy a lot of sleep. You wanna go to sleep early and wake up by around sunrise, right? Because the sleep allows you to regenerate your body it allows you to regenerate your health, regenerate your spirit, right? So if you wake up and you feel like you're not fully rested, then you didn't get your deep quota of sleep. And sleep issues usually is dealing with this water energy, some sort of imbalance in your water, which can imbalance other systems, particularly your fire, which is in the heart, which is the summertime. So that means, like I said, in the summertime, you're extroverted. In the wintertime, you're introverted. So when you're sleeping, you want to be introverted. But if the water is not sufficient, it cannot keep that fire that's trying to blaze outwards subdued, submerged. And that fire is what keeps you awake. They call that insomnia. Right? So you may need to increase your water force right, to have a deep sleep so the body can regenerate itself. It can rebuild all the bone cells and the brain cells and the eye cells and the heart cells and the blood cells and the veins and arteries, everything gets recycled, regenerated, rebuilt during sleep. If you're cutting off your sleep, you're cutting off your healing, you're cutting off your psychic power point blank period, right? So we just wanna be able to um, honor, you wanna give honor to the kidneys, you wanna give honor to the bladder, you want to give honor to your sacred waters during this time period. And that's what we're, that's really what we're talking about. So um, I'm going to move into this energy. They call her in traditional Africa, all sets. The Greeks would call this Isis in Nigeria. In the Yoruba people, they call it Yemeja or Yemeya. And um, someone from the chat, tell me what you see. What are some things that you notice here when you're looking at this imagery? I don't know, Atlantis or Adro, can people, oh, people can't talk, right? So I don't know, but they can chat. They can chat. So um, you can type in the chat what you see in the image, yes. What are, what are people saying? I can't see the chat. Um, they haven't come in yet. Well, okay. someone said Madonna and child, but they're typing get um, seat of soul, a throne. Yes, yes, uh, okay. Crown, nurturing a boy child, breastfeeding. Yes. Throne shells, feeding. So let's take a look at mama. this. Let's okay. take a look at this, that's perfect. So again, we talked about the sign of cancer. That's a water sign. What I'm suggesting to you, when you look at your astrology, don't just look at your sign that you are. Always remember that there's gonna be three signs in each of these elements. Each of these seasons has three particular signs. Summer has three signs. Winter has three signs. Spring has three signs. Fall has three signs. And when you look to deal with an element, you have to look at the combination of those signs as a whole. So the three houses or the three signs in a particular season, you wanna look at as clues of how to nourish that element during that sign. Cancer is the chief aspect of the water sign, right? So I'm just trying to give you an older way of looking at astrology. When, as a, you know, shamanically, when we look to deal with the elements of someone, we have ways that we discover if your elements are deficient or excessive. And then, you know, 
you can use astrology. What is the time period that we're in? And you can borrow energy that informs you what tools to use. Um, using, I'm, I'm dealing with a water person, so I might use water crystals. I mean, crystals with water in it, for instance, like selenite. All right, let me get another sample. I would use selenite. This is a stone that has water inside of it, right? It's, I, it's got, it's a calcium sulfate stone. Calcium deals with the bones, all right? Selenite spelled S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E, S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E. It's another example. If you were coming for treatment for me and I'm giving you water, I might put water inside the selenite bowl. You understand? And then I'm chanting the energies of this force, them bringing out, I'm invoking the water force, right? There's healing sounds that bring this water energy. Or I might be having that sustanche tea and I bring it into this cup and I have you drink it. But this is the ritualistic aspect, you see? Or I might use a shell. I might use a shell. As you can see, you can't probably tell, but she has cowrie shells in her necklace. And cowrie shells are always formed at the beaches by water, right? I live in Kauai now. I'm just kind of visiting Maryland. And um, a friend of mine, her name is Lotus. She told me that during full moons at a particular beach, you can find cowrie shells all over the beach. And when she told me this, I got really excited. It was a... <laughs> and I went to the beach and I scoured the beach for like 45 minutes. It was nearing sundown and we were three days after the full moon. And sure enough, I found cowrie shells formed there. And then any other time I'm at that beach, I don't see them. So somehow the full moon's energy, um, for those of you, I heard someone's in Hawaii from here. So if you go to Secrets Beach, you can find these cowrie shells. And I found them actually in other beaches too. So there's some interesting thing that happens in the heavens when you're near water, when you're near the beach, that energy, that soul energy somehow is accepted in the earth and these cowrie shells form, right? You should check it out. If you have a beach near you, go during the full moon and see if you can find them yourselves, right? But it's interesting because I don't find them any other time except during the full moon's energy. All right, but back to our set. So Aset is this energy, right? She's this energy that on top of her head, you can see here, there's a, there's a throne. One idea of a throne is a place where one sits. And again, the idea of where one sits, where you're sitting on right now, probably most likely is your genitalia. So it's a kind of a clue. In symbols, you can hide many words and many ideas. It's a clue that you're sitting on your power source, which is your genitalia. And that genitalia, if it's, if it's strong, will give you the ability to go into trance. Now notice the seed is blue, which is a receptive color, which is what they would consider a yin or a feminine color. So we're looking for that feminine aspect, not meaning like feminine, like, um, uh, Richard Simmons feminine, or Boy George feminine, but feminine in terms of receptivity, right? Um, that ability to kind of follow and withdraw and not have to be um, out in front and demanding and so on and so forth, but you know, it's that quiet energy. You know, when they say behind every strong man, there's a strong woman. We're talking about this feminine energy, that supportive energy that allows for that strong man to have that expression, you know? So we all have this energy within us. We have to learn how to invoke it, right? And so there's certain time periods, especially when cancer's energy is strong, or even this time period now when the winter time, the oceans and the waters are strong. This is the time to harness this. And she's giving you clues what will happen there's an inner child being nourished at the breast, which is a symbol of nourishment, right? So in 
if you were to ritualistically wanted to work with your own ability to nourish yourselves, you can choose essential oils that nourish breast milk. They call emogogs, emogogs. Um, some examples of that would be, let me just stop the share real quick. Um, come to the chat. So things that nourish breast milk would be fennel seed oil, essential oil, right? Or fenugreek essential oil. Um, those would be things that would nourish, you know, nourish you. Um, and that's important because at this time period, you have to learn how to nourish yourself. You know, you have to give yourself, you have to go deep into your own waters. So by giving things that nourish the breast, it's giving things that nourishes you in a deep, deep place. And remember, these are seed oils. Fenugreek is a seed oil. Fen no, fennel is a seed oil. The energy of the winter times, the deepest part of the earth where the seeds would be, right? So just using essential oils and anointing yourself with that. You can take clay, right? You saw that first slide. I'll go back to it. Where the sisters, the sisters were getting down. <laughs> Why do Africans wear clay, right? Why do they wear these substances from the earth? Because clay and, you know, clay substrates, parts of the soil have an absorptive function, right? They hold water. So if there's something inside of you that wants to be held, you want to hold this sense of my ability to nourish myself. Maybe you have a lifestyle where you feel like you're ill-nourished. Maybe society's not nourishing, your man's not nourishing, your mate's not nourishing, your children not nourishing, your job's not nourishing, your food's not really nourishing. You just feel ill-nourished. Well, you can always nourish yourself, right? You can take care of your kid energy. You can take that. You can take clay in one hand, a little water that you've blessed, holy water, or just any kind of water. You mix those two together, and then you put the essential oil, the fennel, rub that together and just rub your breasts. That ritualistically to your spirit will be an indication, hey, this person's seeking to nourish themselves. Or if something inside of you is not working well and you want to nourish it, then you can take that same concoction ritualistically. You get that clay. You get those oils, you get that water that you've blessed and you've prayed over. You have to bring a ritual to it. The ritual is just bringing your will and your spirit into a substance. And you want those two to mix, right? And then you rub all that together. And whatever in your body is not working, if it's the knees, if it's the bones, it's the reproductive organs, it's the brains, the hearing, the lower back, or anywhere else in the body, you can just rub this substance on, all right? And that will be how you ritualistically are in tune with the season of this water energy. And that's how we move as people, right? Um, essential oil, again, because it's a liquid, so it's kind of going back into that water energy. Do you all get me what I'm saying? With this idea of ritual. And then once you're there, once you've applied this energy, you have to now put your mind in a place where you are very joyful. You're very thankful, right? You're giving thanks to the creator for the ability to heal yourself. And you want to see your body as healed. So if it's a low back pain issue or a knee issue that you're dealing with, you want to now see your body as if, as if it's fully healed. So if the knee issue is preventing you from maybe playing table tennis, <laughs> all right? Then you wanna be able to see yourself in your visualizations and your meditations, slamming that ball, going from side to side on the table, you know, doing a flip if you have to backhand, um, the whole bit, but whatever it takes, right? Or say like, you don't feel nourished at your job and you want to acquire a new job, right? then there's nothing stopping you from taking, say, that crystal um, 
a water holding crystal like selenite. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another one called a popolite. So another water holding crystal. So I hold a lot of water holding crystals because I work a lot with the healing force of water. So all the crystals around me or on my person generally have to do with the manipulation of water energy. I'm in December, I'm a Capricorn, right? I know that's an earth sign, but we're representing this winter period and that supersedes, right? So I pay respect to the earth within this water period, this winter period, which is a water energy, you understand? Um, so if it's a job that you're seeking, right? You're looking to get something, you wanna get ahead in some kind of project or venture, then you may surround yourself ritualistically with this water energy. I might have this apophyllite, I might have this selenite, I might be holding it. It might be on me when I'm meditating, right? Um, I might be grasping it in my hand or on my foot or any of those sacred areas that you wanted to anoint. Maybe you get a smaller piece, you could put it on your head representing the brain, or you could put it um, on the knee, on the low back. You understand like that's where the waist beads come in, right? The waist beads, if you have the proper crystals, then you can ritualistically promote the energy you're seeking in that area. So I'm just trying to give you behind the scenes of how priests, priestesses, shamans, people who manipulate these energies are working. But you can do this for yourself. You don't have to be some high and mighty trained. You can do this for yourself. And that's what people did, you know, and they did this exquisitely um, during the seasonal changes because that's when the veil between heaven and earth is thin and you can have direct access to what you consider your creator. So again, on this job tip, you could see yourself having the benefits in your imagination, having the benefits of this job, right? You can visualize maybe having a bigger space, right? In terms of a residence or maybe a new vehicle or you're eating better food, maybe you're eating organic foods or expensive foods because you have more income, disposable income to deal with so you can nourish and take better care of yourself, right? Um, and, you're, and the whole time you're doing this, you're giving thanks to your creator for allowing you this opportunity. So this is kind of what we're talking about with regards to ritual. Um, I think I would like to, okay, let me just tie up these, I got so much stuff. You can see there's so much to talk about and uh, I'm gonna just try to fire through these. Uh, I know it's a lot of seasons. I'm trying to fire through these slides though. Um, I'm gonna leave that one alone. Um, when I was talking about the kidney and the bladder channel, this is an example. This is from Chinese medicine. This is from the shamans. That's where they get these ideas of these bladders or the, the channels, I should say. Let me see if I can drag this over. Um, well, you can see this energy starts off at the, the little toe and it comes up the back. So you can see its intersection is here. You can see it going through the calves, the back of the knee, right, the, the buttocks. And you can see the spine influence and it goes up into the head, into the brain and it terminates right here in the inner canthus of the eye, right? So if everyone just went like this, this is a way that you can strengthen your bladder channel, which is part of that water expression. Just doing this, rubbing it maybe nine times one way, nine times the other way, or you could do more, it will strengthen and stimulate this whole channel system. Right. And the bladder is very important because the bladder channel, I'm not just talking about what allows you to have the ability to urinate, right? We're talking about a whole energy system. You're seeing one of the pathways here. This is the main pathway. And when you stimulate this energy, it sends energy up into your spine and then allows you to be different than who you presently see yourself as today. In the old days, right, this in the old medicine, the dibyas or the shamans, right, the medicine men and women, 
they knew if they wanted to change an individual or help an individual to change their habits, their patterns. Maybe they have you have a self-destructive pattern, right? Maybe you drink too much, you smoke too much, you have too much sex, you drain yourself, but you're addicted to these things. You can't seem to shake them, right? And you tried so many different things, but there are external things you've been trying. You've been trying to get external counseling, reading self-help books. You try to just say no, <laughs> but that addiction keeps rearing up and kicking your, you know what, you know? And so, because maybe you've been trying to change yourself ex with external methods when the change needs to come from your internal methods, your meditation, your internalization of consciousness, your deep inward journey in, into the core of what makes you you, right? Beneath the soil, beneath the roots where the mental thoughts are, the emotional thoughts are, the spiritual laws and faculties are. You need to, and so that's what this water energy is all about, right? And the bladder is a major component of that. And one way <clears throat> you can re-engineer this energy because you're gonna have those, for example, you have that addiction to whatever your vice is because the energy is pouring from this bladder channel into a particular area of the body. And that area of the body governs an emotion and then governs thinking and governs behaviors. Right. So what you have to do is learn how to irrigate your waters differently so they don't spill into the place where the um, addiction is. They spill more into the place where your inspiration, your aspirations are. Right. But you have to dig those ditches. You have to irrigate that. And that's where your rituals come in. Right. That's where your imagination, your ability to see things differently come in. That's why I had you stimulate the eye. Um, you know, this energy we call Hedaru, she's influenced through your ability to visualize, right, with joyfulness, the outcome of what you want to happen. That's, she gives you that energy, right? You can see the eyes have, you know, this is just a chart showing how powerful the eyes are. Through your eye, you can control your whole internal organ structure. Right, the white of the eye, the sclera, right? The pupil of your eye represents your kidneys. So you look deep into the pupil of someone, deep into their pupil, you can see what their kidneys are doing. The inner and outer campus of the eyes, right on the sides of the eyes, there shows you, if you know what you're looking at, you can see the condition of someone's heart. You can tell if someone's about to have a heart attack because you'll see particular veins that are bulging, right? And you can be like, hey, you might, you might want to go get checked out, right? The iris will give you clues on what the liver inside of you is doing and the flesh around the eye. You know, and sometimes people get those, um, what are those conditions, those styes? You get the sty around the eye. If you ever see someone or you yourself have dealt with a sty around the eye, that's letting you know that your spleen in your stomach is in trouble. You need to give it some help. You need to give it some digestive herbs or to figure out, you know, you have to maybe change your diet tremendously to, you know, to change that situation around. So this is a picture of the Giza Plateau. And the Giza Plateau is a phenomenon. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. And this is directly tying into the, the, um, the Orion you know, the Orion about the Orion constellation. And Orion in ancient Africa was the concept of the great man or Osir, what they call Osiris, which is the living God within you, right? That living God within you was considered Osiris. And these pyramids, 10,000 BC, were directly oriented pinpointly, you know, towards those stars. The great pyramid was the middle star in Orion's belt and the other two stars where the other pyramids in perfect alignment. So what are the ancients are trying to tell, what are they trying to tell us? Because think about it. They knew that the time period would come when the language that they're speaking would no longer be understood by their descendants. 
So they had to come up with a creative way to communicate a deep message to people 10,000 years or 5,000 years or many thousand years in the future. So what did they do? They were so clever, they wrote their instructions in stone and that's what these pyramids are. They knew that the words, the papyrus and all that, those things may fade, the books that will fade, but the structures will stand and remain. And if you can decode the structures, then you can decode what they're trying to say. And what I'm saying is that, that they were aligned. They wanted this very important structure that's withstood the test of time. They wanted you to understand that it's oriented to this constellation Orion, which in Christian tradition, they'll say Orion represents God, the father. If you're Kemetic, you'll say, or ancient Egyptian, you'll say Oser. If you were Greek, you say Osiris. If you were um, Yoruba, you'll say Obatala, right? This energy of the Godhead, this spirit within you, this is, the, this is what these pyramids were seeking to awaken because they're trying to tell you like, this is the most important thing that we have. So look at this genius of this culture that I was able to say, hey, the most important thing that we can communicate to you all, our descendants, your ancestors, is that you have to get in tune with this energy of this most high God within you. And the winter solstice and all the solstices and equinoxes, but primarily the winter solstice is the most important time to do so. I know that time is running. Um, I think I'm just gonna take the Q and A here because um, I don't have time to uh, you know, go too deep. I'll just say one more thing with this. This is the God they call Haru, which is the archetype of the Jesus Christ. And we know that the sun is born, right? The sun is born um, December 25, meaning that astrologically, after the solstice, the solstice is where the sun apparently stands still at the lowest place on the ecliptic, right? Or on the circle. Just think of it as it's just down here in this low space. It can't go any lower down. And it just stands still for these four days and four nights. And then on, so December 21 through December 24, it apparently looks like it's not moving. It appears like it's dead. And then December 25, something unique happens that sun seems to rise up out of that stillness it was stuck at. Stika, so stika means the sun stuck, still, the sun is still. And then on December 25, the sun appears to rise again. Hence, we get this idea of the sun is risen or the light of the world is reborn, it's regenerated. And that's where you get this idea of this, um, this God Heru, right? This hero archetype within us and um you can see that the sun is surely above his head it's it's above his crown so and where you had in kundalini yoga and all these kundalini ideas or the vagus nerve ideas it's showing that this person this initiate or you as an initiate you've taken this sexual energy and you raise it up the spine and you brought it to your head and now it's active upon the head right and that's where your psychic energy is most powerfully magnified when you can conserve that sexual energy raise it up the spine and bring it up to your head it gives you a very magical ability and the comedic people were very interested in the emanations that came from the sun you see and that's what we have to get back into the science of how we can look at the sun look at the cosmos and learn how to gather and work and cultivate their hands are they're doing stuff they're using the things that can manipulate energy they're doing they're trying to show you through glyphs that you have to manipulate energies in order to be successful in this life you can't just kind of sit down and wing it you can't just like be in a boat with no sail you have to do something you have to work at this right so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna cut it off, cut it off here because I'm sure there's many. Well, there's probably just a few questions, mm -hmm. and if uh, I will just get to what I can for the little, we got about half hour left, I think. Yes. 
Okay, wonderful. Um, first of all, um, I'm sure the audience will join me in just thanking you for that wonderful, very informative and clear presentation. Thank you so much. And um, for the questions, um, I will be taking questions from the question from the Q and A box. So if you do have a question, please type it in the Q and A box. I will look to see uh, similarities among questions and ask those and questions that you um, already addressed. Um, we will just um, go past those for the sake of time and trying to get everyone's question in. So what I wanna start off first, there were several people asking if you have a book, do you plan on writing a book and do you offer workshops? So we'll put all that together. Okay. Um, at present, there's no book, but I am in the process of writing a book. That's kind of why I moved to Hawaii to just have some quiet to tap in to, you know. And so that book is presently being composed. I have two of these um, notebooks full of, essentially it'll be chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. So I already have three chapters of a book done. Um, but I don't know how long it will take to finish. It's still kind of an ongoing process. Um, I do offer workshops and I do have a, um, I do have a class. I teach every Tuesday and Thursday over Zoom. I'll share that in the chat. So folks, I'll just share this information in the chat. So if folks want to get a hold of me, this would be the way to do it. So give me a second. So you can see, um, that's the Zoom class coordinates. If you just copy and paste that, I'm teaching a class tomorrow on um, how to make money using crystals, right? I needed to make money coming away from Hawaii and kind of my source of where I was making income. I'm here and I had to make some moves and make some income and I set up a little feng shui crystal money making generation thing and it's already come successfully, I already found two workshops that I'll be doing within the next two weeks, which will generate what I'm looking for. So if you want to learn a little bit about that science, you can join me tomorrow's Zoom class at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. And um, you can see my email is there as well. If you have any questions or you would like a consultation or go deeper into the subject, um, by all means, you can feel free to contact me. Wonderful. Um, our next question, is from Robert Galloway. Is there a relationship between astronomy and astrology? And that question was also asked by another participant. Yeah, um, one is more the study of the bodies, the physical bodies of, the, we should call it the celestial bodies or things in the cosmos. And then one is a metaphor, right? Astrology is more of a metaphor. The astronomy is more of a measure of the physical bodies. Okay, this is the moon, this is the craters. Okay, this is the minerals on the craters. You know, it's a very external kind of science where the astrology is more of an internal coded science of how to live and how to move and how to act at a particular period of time. That's kind of what I was... So I was more interested in dealing with the astrology because I wanted you to be able to look behind the science. The, just knowing the sign is, is surface, but you can see there's a whole tradition. If you're dealing with African culture, there's a whole tradition. And that's what I want people to understand. There's a whole way of eating during the time period, body parts that you want to hold sacred and sanctify and strengthen and regenerate during the time period, foods and herbs and colors, right? The color of astrology, the color of the water time period is black and dark blue, your dark colors your blacks, your blues, right? Um, so you could be in, if you're doing ritual and you wanted to strengthen your kidneys or strengthen, let's just say, let's just get right to the chase because I know a lot of people want to deal with like your own reproductive energy. You could, you would want to wrap your body in black or blue cloth or sleep in that or your blankets, your beddings would be representative of that or you change the color of your room right? Or you get the black and blue foods inside of you, blackberries and blueberries and uh, mulberries, and that would help to regenerate these particular systems in you, you see. So all of that is astrology. Astrology is a coded system. It's codified. You find it in lodges. You find it in shamanic 
circles, you find it in priestly circles, they all move with astrological science. And you don't want to be caught lacking in these days and times because things are moving so fast, right? Um, laws are changing, rules are changing. And you want to be solid with your astrology because when you talk about innate immunity, innate immunity, nothing is more powerful than moving with your soul's power and connecting it to your earth power, right? And to me, that's what astrology, the science of it is really trying to convey. Thank you. Um, another question, there are meridians on the human body and on the planet earth. Are they related? Yes, they are. Everything that is inside of you exists outside of you. And that's what Chinese medicine is all kind of like, um, it's demonstrating, right? It's demonstrating that just like you have rivers outside of you, you have rivers inside of you, you have water inside of you, you have your hormones, right? Your endocrine system, you have um, saliva, you have urine, you have sexual fluids, you have your blood, right? You have your um, tears, right? The exocrine glands. So all of these waters that you see outside of you, they also exist within you. So when, if you, so essentially you are all of the elements and through ritual, we try to resonate with these elements to achieve a particular thing, right? So yeah, there's definitely a combination, there's a, a coordination of the external elements without and the internal elements within. And all we're looking to do is harmonize these things. So say, for instance, if you, um, we didn't talk much about fire today, but if you're a fire sign, like that Sagittarius or that Aries, you could easily go to a place that represents fire to you. Maybe that's um, a desert. Maybe you take a trip to Arizona <laughs> or some place where it's very hot or some place in your locality where you get a lot of unobstructed sunlight, or you can look at the sun itself, or you could look at a representation of the sun, which is candles, or you could look at the ground representation of solar energy, which is sand. And all of these things ritualistically could be utilized. You could put, if you need more fire force, the ability to be more passionate, to be more communicative, to be more spontaneous. Some of people's marriages or relationships are suffering from a lack of spontaneity. Maybe you're just not bringing that fire element. It might be low in you. And then you can use some of these things or fire crystals, generally, which would be reddish color or purple color, right? You can bring these things, you can wear them, you can make them into elixirs and drink them or fire herbs, things like the herb called coptis or things that strengthen the heart, the small intestine um or fire breathing right there's a lot of ways we can stimulate the fire fiery herbs and peppers and ginger but there's lots of ways but all of what i'm trying to say is that yes you definitely have a, a correlation between the inner and the outer the meridians of the body are a reflection of the meridians on the earth and what affects one will definitely always affect you and that's really what astrology is all about everyone right now the meridians of the kidney and the bladder are being affected because the earth is in a winter season, a water season. So we're all being affected by this now. Okay, and just to build upon that, um, a question was asked about the, the idea of as above, so below. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, would you say that um, as above, so below is pretty much what you just expressed? Yeah, I tried to express... Uh, <laughs> I try to express that, yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, Felicia would like to know, how do you know what sign governs what organs? Oh, um, good question. You can just grab, um, yeah, I know people are at different levels of a, you know, scholarship with regards to astrology, uh, but I'm always taught to try to treat everyone like they're a beginner. So you could just get yourself, um, you can just Google, you can just Google, um, you know, astrological sign and body parts, or maybe get an astrology book, right? Um, I have a book here written by one of my teachers, the late great Dr. Africa. This is the book. I love this book. He put his wife on the cover. <laughs> I 
So it's um, holistic self-diagnosis. And then there's a section here where you can see it. I, I don't know if it's gonna be backwards to you, but you can see right here, it says Aries, right? And then um, a little bit down from there, it's gonna show what, um, where is it? Parts of the body ruled right here. Parts of the body ruled. And so can you see that? Or does it look backwards? So you can see it says it rules. If you're Aries, if your sign is Aries, you're a March baby or a spring baby. That means that your head, the brain, the face, the pituitary gland, illnesses such as headaches, skin eruptions, problems with ears, nose, and or accidents, um, injuries occur around the head, right? Those would be things that you have to learn to protect. So your headgear for an Aries person would be very important. An Aries person probably, you know, if you're wearing things on your head, you know, that's where you might have the, um, uh, you know, you might wrap something in your head, you might cover something, you might put essential oils to anoint your head with things that represent that Aries, that Ram energy. That Ram energy is ruled by Mars. So your martial um, substances would be very useful. I'm talking about pine, essential oil of pine, right? Um, or if you have pine cones and you just like had a pine cone you know, like how I'm wearing this necklace, if you wear a necklace of pine, that will protect this area, right? Or if you drink tea of ginger, or you use herbs of eucalyptus, or you have eucalyptus in a bath, maybe you come to someone like a shaman or a priest, and they make you a bath of ginger and pine and eucalyptus, and, you know, push up, you crush all that together, pulverize it, have a little clay in there, and then you rub that in your head. Now you have something that's protecting you from the ill aspects of Aries while bringing in the positive aspects of Aries. So enlighten you, strengthen your pineal gland, strengthen your pituitary gland, improve the function of the brain, improve the face and the function of the eyes and everything going on up in the head region, right? I know a woman, she's prone to accidents in the head. She's been clobbered in the head. I think she's had four tree branches hit her on her head. And I guarantee if I looked at her chart, there'd be something that areas would be dominant. She's not protecting her head. And that's why nature keeps trying to <laughs> give her the clue and the signal to where to have protection for her head, right? So uh, I hope that answers your question. Just look for some resources um, on Google or something like that astrology books okay and um gonna take this is gonna be the, the last question around the topic of astrology um but someone did ask how do you find your sign and you can definitely google your date of birth to figure out what um astrological sign you are however uh Kalila would like to know when considering the astrological aspect are we just looking at the sun sign or considering the moon and ascendant too. And on top of that, another uh, attendee asked, what about signs on the cusp, like Capricorn and Aquarius? So if you're born on a cusp, how does that fit into this? Uh, tackle that last one first. If you're born on the cusp, you have to address both energies because you're, you're the bridge, you're the mediator of both. So you're gonna see you have expressions of one and you have expressions of the sign and then sign to come, right? You have expression, you have a dual expression, a bipolar expression. So you have to include in your rituals um, elements of both those um, seasons. Uh, and then as far as um, how to determine your sign, yeah, you wanna definitely bring in your rising sign or what they call the ascendant, your sun sign and your moon. I didn't wanna get into that too much because, you know, it's getting a little too technical for just a small presentation like this. That's better off for like a, a series, you know, maybe maybe we can do an astro astrological herbal series, or astrological crystals and herbs and essential oil series where you can learn how to make your own protection, make your own medicines with the herbs. I know coronavirus is a hot topic right now. There's definitely ways you can protect yourself from coronavirus, you know. In Hawaii, I had 
housemates, two housemates that had this virus, they were speaking to each other and I was in between them washing my dishes and they both had this virus. It never came to me, <laughs> you know? And they're literally like five feet just talking to me the whole time, you know? And I thought like, oh, okay, this one is down and out. This one's down and out. It never touched me, <laughs> right? Um, so we can have classes like that. I shared in my Qigong class yesterday, just on the topic of coronavirus, that if you've got the vaccine and you're worried about uh, potential damage Right now, your screen is frozen. Hopefully, um, the connection will pick back up. So we'll just give them a moment. Thank you for your patience. So we'll give them a moment to rejoin us. Thank you all. And while you all, while we're waiting for him to rejoin, this program will be um, aired on IKG's Facebook page. So you can see the program there as well as our YouTube page. Um, Atlantis has placed that in the chat. Um, again, if you would like to sign up and learn more about IKG's programming, please go to ikgculturalresourcecenter.com and you will find out about our Wisdom Wednesday series, Egypt on the Potomac field trips, as well as um, different trips to um, Egypt. So we thank you again, and we're gonna give our guests a few minutes to sign back in. Okay, we're back. We Bye. are back. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful energy. The energy is powerful. The energy is high. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I, I was getting deep with it. I was trying to get deep with it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so you were getting very deep. So you were talking um about um if you took the uh vaccine. Thank you. Thank you. And while you're on that topic, it's great because there were a couple of questions about um treatments, herbal or supplements that one can take if they have COVID. But if you can continue on about COVID and the vaccine, um, that would be great. Sure. So um, one thing that I like to do uh, for COVID is, um, <clears throat> so essential oils are very powerful because, you know, plants essentially, they're, they're not very mobile. You know, they can't really move. So they're attacked from the external plane. If something comes to attack them, the way they defend themselves are through the generation of oils. They bring oils from their depth into the surface, to their plants. And they try to dispel things coming to them. So kind of thinking like you've dealing with viruses or bacteria or fungi, and you need to dispel them, the oils will be, they're very, they're already on it. You understand? They're already on it in terms of learning how to dispatch these things. So if you took essential oils, that have the power to strengthen the immune system, the innate immune system, meaning the lungs, the metal, the Western version, the Western, um, the signs that they consider earth signs or metal signs. Um, so if, for instance, your eucalyptuses, right? Your eucalyptuses would be very powerful dispersers of energies that would be considered COVID or even things that are evergreens. They're ever resilient, they're ever watching, they never sleep, evergreens like juniper oil, um, um, pine oil. Um, you can deal with cedar oil, right? Fir oil, F-I-R, fir, right? These essential oils would be something that you could use to, on a daily basis, 
or I just put them in my mask, right? I, like when I traveled from Hawaii over here, I just sprinkled a little bit of that oil, put it on my body, put some in my mask. That was good. <laughs> you know, that was good. So if anyone's interested in, I've offered these blends so I can easily make you a blend, just email me. I think um, I had my link up earlier in the chat. I'll put it here again. And I can easily make you a blend. Just tell me if you want a one ounce or two ounce bottle and you can have, I would consider it a COVID blend that, um, you know, that will protect you. And then just to finish my thought on the obsidian, obsidian, you would drink this as an elixir, meaning you would put um, distilled water in a mason jar, right? Just pretend this is a mason, oh, this is a mason jar. So, you know, you would have a distilled water here. You would drop your obsidian. It doesn't, have, doesn't matter what the size is. And you let this sit for two or three days. You allow the water to accept the vibrations of the obsidian. After the third day, then you start drinking this water. You can drink about two to four ounces twice a day. Um, immediately after you've received the vaccination or just any time afterwards, and it will begin the process of releasing any harmful elements because you know this is man-made stuff so there's prone to be some things that slip by that are not quite correct for the our our, our biology the, our organism so this obsidian will catch those things and pull it so it doesn't become in your deep waters and become birth defects or uh, lead to chronic degenerative diseases, which are on the rise in the Western world. That's the biggest thing that's going on right now is chronic degenerative diseases. And this is one way using obsidian, a stone from God, pulling the deep fires within you, pulling them up and out of the surface to get rid of things. So you'll probably start to see yourself urinating more, defecating more, sweating more, but that's good because that's signs of you're getting rid of that gunk rather than it staining you and becoming arthritis, us, you know, and all these kind of um, conditions that doctors today are having a hard time dealing with. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so one of the herbs, there's a few questions around herbology. So I'm glad that you're uh, on that topic. Alyssa was asking, and a couple of others also asked, is it okay to take the staunch tea or the herb while pregnant? Okay, when you're pregnant, you, it's a whole different set of codes and rules. Um, when you're pregnant, it depends on the stage of your pregnancy. What stage are you at? You know, the three trimesters. The first trimester, generally you want things that strengthen the spleen stomach. That's why women get nausea, um, motion sickness, these kind of, you know, these kind of things, because the pregnancy's energy is concentrated in the spleen, the stomach, digestive organs, right? And then the second trimester, that concentration moves into the heart. That's the emotional center. And you want things that are kind of feeding that energy. And then the last trimester, when the baby's getting ready to be born, to be to grow, to be born, that's the spring season, that's the liver energy system. That's a whole different set of herbs you use for that. So Sistanche doesn't really fit so much into this pregnancy picture unless this person is severely deficient in their energy, meaning they feel very taxed, very fatigued. Then we can put a small amount, maybe three grams or less in a herbal formula. But for that, I'd be more confident if that person contacted me or went to their healthcare provider, their healthcare physician, their naturopath, and inspect on a global level what is happening with your body so we can, you know, um, properly, um, you know, provide you with what you need. So I would say Sistanche could be used, but it has to be in the right condition. And for that, I would say, you know, just give, give your healthcare provider a call uh, to get a diagnosis of what your organs are looking like. Okay. And along those same lines with Sistanche, how about a person has high blood pressure um, would it aggravate, aggravate them with the salt content? Um, it's what not, would you recommend for high blood pressure? It's not salty like potato chip salt. <laughs> it's just uh, an herbal classification of salt. The taste is salty. So when you actually taste the raw herb, 
um, you put in your mouth. For most people, it tastes somewhat sandpapery, right? It kind of has a sandpaper aftertaste, which is evidence of salt, right? It means high mineral content. So it's not actually, it will not be bad for someone with high blood uh, pressure condition. It's something that can be quite useful for a high blood pressure condition. Just you don't want to do it in too much in abundance. So, um, and of course, if you have high blood pressure, that means energy is rising up high. If you're thinking herbally, what brings energy down generally are roots, right? So one way you can counteract high blood pressure is by including more roots in your diet or your herbal formula, like dandelion roots, right? Or um, you want the bitter taste, which is the taste that's probably most missing in standard American diet is the bitter taste because the bitter taste brings energy down. It clears heat, it clears aggravation, it clears acid. So you want to include things in your food that have the bitter taste, right? It doesn't have to be dominant in your plate, but you have to have something that allows this conveyance of the energy that's rising up tendency, high blood pressure, headaches, red bloodshot eyes, insomnia, anxiety, all that is signs of energy is going too fast is going too high up and it's not being able to come down so the roots or the bitter taste will help to bring those in the opposite direction and clear that okay wonderful and speaking of um energy lowell would like to know what herbs create balance and harmony in the body and i'm sure that's a loaded question but yeah it is <laughs> but for <laughs> essentially um in a shotgun class like this, I'll just say you can reach for your adaptogens, right? Adaptogen herbs are like herbs that are, that kind of can do multiple things at once. They have the ability to kind of harmonize you. So the ashwagandha I talked about earlier would be something that can harmonize you. Um, Siberian ginseng, you know, anything that would be considered um, an adaptogen would be something that would be very useful. Or if you're looking for a harmonizer, the, the old, in the old days, they used to use ginger to harmonize, licorice, and jujube. Jujube, jujube dates. So these are three herbs that you can utilize. Maybe you can just take all three as a tea and that would be something that strengthens the, the earth element within you. This, the, remember we showed that earlier um, glyph with the cross and in the middle of that cross was this earth element, right? Just like in your body, the digestive system is in the middle. And if you harmonize your digestion, you can bring harmony to all the other systems as well. So that's one approach. So okay. And a few um, people are asking, um, so I'm gonna kind of com combine these next few questions. One is what about black seed oil as a supplement? And then two, um, you've talked about different oils and someone, some, several people are asking about carrier oils. Should you use carrier oils? And if so, which carrier oils do you suggest? Okay, great questions. Um, carrier oils, are important when you want to allow the essential oils to penetrate deeper into the body. Um, the way I was taught was that the essential oils, the oil is for the body and the scent is for the spirit, right? So that's why you find these essential oils in religious ceremonies, rituals, right? The scent. So if you're interested in the scent, then you don't really need the carrier oil. But if you're interested in the medicinal aspect, then the carrier oil is important. And the carrier oil just depends on where you're trying to drive the essential oils to. Like say for this class, we're talking about the water element. So black sesame seed carrier oil brings things into your depths, into your kidneys, right? It's like the uber that drives substance into your kidneys, into your depths. So it's gonna be matching the energy that's present in the environment, in the atmosphere today. So you could easily put some oils together with that clay concoction I talked about earlier, that black sesame seed oil and the essential oils of that, um, you know, the, um, 
the fenugreek and the fennel, and you can put all that together and it will drive it deep into you and give you a sense of deep nourishment, meaning you don't have to get nourished from the outside world. That nourishment is going to be coming and being unleashed within yourselves. You give it to yourselves. You breastfeed upon the heavenly mother, the heavenly breast. Um, so or if you're looking to move emotions, maybe you have to stuck in a particular emotion, you're stuck in a particular addiction. You want to move from this place to a new place. Generally use leaves, you know, and herbs, herbally or essential oils. And then you can use olive oil. Olive oil moves the energy in the liver that where you tend to be stuck, your habit, your habits, your habituations, your patternings, your conditionings, right? If you want to move that energy, move that blood so you can express something new, then your carrier oil could be olive oil, right? Um, if you have something on the, you're worried about COVID and, you know, all that sort of thing, then almond oil, which is, has a good resonance with the skin, the most external guard, the most external shield from this, you know, that you have for the outer world. Almond oil stimulates your outward defenses. So if uh, many of you, if some of you are going to be contacting me, don't be surprised if I'm going to send you an essential oil with the carrier of almond oil, you know, um, with the other eucalyptus and evergreen oils in that mixture to help protect you. So um, again, it's too deep, but that's that's that. So that's, that's great. And um, there's about well five and one really quick question that um we'll take as a as a final questions um for the evening and again emma Boise's information um we'll place back in the chat so again he does offer workshops um you can email him for more detailed or personal information but um, one question I think everyone might be interested in is, do you do spiritual consults? Yes, I, I definitely do. That's, that's, yes. what kept me, that's what kept me afloat in, uh, in Hawaii. Is, um, that's prim primarily where most of my funds are made, just, well, you know, in um, spiritual consultations and um, medicinal, you know, complaints. Um, those are the major two areas. So like, it's a wide range of things. I think you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg of what can be done, you know, but if people have problems, issues, um, I've been well-trained, the Osara Set Society and my shamanic teachers, I've been well-trained to deal with the spiritual side of life. I use readings, I utilize oracles, um, and then I use utilize mainly Chinese medicine with this African medicine over overlay and um we can pretty much address very many things and if it's above my pay grade i'm not i'm humble enough to let you know <laughs> it's above my pay grade yeah okay Alyssa um would like to know does cascara white powder can that be used as clay yeah cascara yeah the cascara is definitely um it has very similar pro properties to that clay it's going to hold force near your body you know, it's going to help you to absorb this water energy. Whereas, like I was saying earlier, sand is more like related to the sun. So that helps to disperse energy. So if you have like um, tumors, you know, you may want to sand pack with things that herbs or essential oils to disperse energy inside that sand. And you put that directly over the tumor site, right? Or say like... Um, you're looking to absorb prosperity, absorb abundance, then you can use salt. You don't have to eat it. You can just put it around your ritual space, put it around your bed or put it around that area where you're doing those rituals to power, empower yourself to bring resources in. Salt is an absorbent energy. It absorbs water, right? It holds onto water. It holds onto things. It holds onto your spirit and those prayers that come from deep within so that's the power of salt in crystal format this crystal here it's called fluorite it's a halogen crystal and halo comes from halo which means salt right so in rituals where you want to hold on to energy you can use fluorite fluorite is also good that um 
it allows things to become latent or hidden. They're like, so it's like, say, if you have cancer and it's metastasizing, meaning it's spreading like wildfire in your body, the cancer, you know, you've heard people saying cancer is spreading and you want to arrest, you want to halt that spreading of the cancer that you would use this crystal immediately, right? So stop a cancer from going from stage three to stage four. And what that will do, it's not going to cure the cancer, but what it will do will hold it down and buy you time to figure out methods and techniques to eliminate the cancer right? Versus it spreading and taking over your body and taking you off this plane, this physical plane. So, but yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question, can you give a connection between the Indian medical science of Ayurveda and our African science? And I'm sure that's another long one. So yeah. give a brief uh, explanation or connection between the two. Um, well, I think just the key point is that, you know, my first, what I, my first kind of come up was through Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic lenses. And when I was in Rochester, New York, I had a teacher uh, for two years, Sonam Targi, who taught me Ayurvedic principles. Um, but I, I left that behind because I saw that it didn't seem complete for me. I was living in a place where it dealt with four seasons and Ayurvedic, they've, pretty much focus on three, what they call doshas or three energy states. But I was more interested in this four energy state configuration, which I found more so in Chinese medicine and traditional African medicine. You know, they deal with that four and that middle piece is the transformative energy. Ayurveda doesn't have that. So it, as a system, you know, that just didn't quite work for me. I don't know if in India, maybe they only have three major expression of the seasons maybe that works for something like that over there but over here i was in the western world we have four general major seasons it didn't quite compute for me but you know um but the principles of ayurveda and the principles of african medicine the principles of asian medicine they're essentially coming from the same place they're coming from this understanding of beyond what you see there's an energy around the energy body and it can be manipulated and that's where your psychic energy is held and once you understand that um you can treat it you can amplify you can treat yourself you know and um so they all share that similarity from that perspective they're all useful in that perspective okay and for our final question i'm going to combine it um as they relate back to the presentation that you gave today and the season of winter. So um, connecting to the earth is imperative. How can we accomplish this during the winter? What foods should we eat during this winter solstice between the 21st and the 24th? Um, are there particular foods to eat during that fast? And when you speak of conserving your sexual energy during this, this, this winter time, do you mean celibacy? Yeah, so celibacy essentially means it's alchemy for the soul, right? Meaning that if you're not spilling your seed outside of yourself, then you're absorbing that seed for within. The chief thing about reproductive or sexual energy is that you want to be able to reproduce physically that which is in your mind or in your spirit to do, right? So if you want to see, you want to be able to reproduce what your spirituality has in store for you that's what the sexual energy is about and that's what celibacy, celibacy promotion is for and celibacy is here we're talking about not spilling your seed not that you don't engage in an intercourse but you're not spilling your seed two different things right and um some things i think i mentioned some things earlier in the lecture that um you can use to conserve again that would be more of a personal thing um just because it's it's too detailed but just some foods you can take if you're gonna fast right there's different ways you can fast you don't have to do a whole grade oh, i'm not gonna eat anything fast you could just do like i'm just gonna concentrate on a fruit i know in osiris Set society we generally uh, a lot of the priests and priestesses and members will fast um just on oranges right or you'll just take oranges you take and make into juice you juice the orange for the high vitamin C content, and that vitamin C is going to be clearing you, 
It's going to be pushing things. It's going to be pushing pathogens out of you so you don't shut down in the winter with those pathogens. Because those pathogens that you shut down with in the wintertime will be reproduced when the spring energy, when, they, when it gets warmer, those things that will be hibernated and incubating in you will start to come out. And you have diseases of the winter. You gave yourself those diseases by incorrect living. And you give those things are manifest in the spring due to incorrect living in the winter, right? Not resting, not spending time doing this winter solstice, just exerting too much energy. You're setting yourself up for physical failure. So, um, so in the wintertime, you don't want things that are going to be too much activating, not too much spicy, right? So you, you want things that are going to be easy to digest, like miso soup, right? Um, uh, this is panelists. Let me go to everyone. So things that are easy to digest would be like miso soup, what they call kanjis. You can look up what kanjis are. Um, you can eat things that are like mushrooms. You know, mushrooms are important because in the wintertime, you're not dealing with a lot of light and mushrooms don't need light to grow. Right? Mushrooms don't need the sun's light to grow. Right? And so mushrooms will help you to find the light within yourself. Right? Um, you can eat those seeds. I was talking about the black sesame or any kind of seeds or anything that provides fats, healthy fats like avocados. Right? Um, you can have things that are easy to digest like fermented. This is pretty much the only time in the year where I'm gonna drink those kombucha teas, right? You know, those kombucha drinks. You can best if you can make your own kombucha or anything that's kind of fermenting, right? Because fermented foods means what? Nature itself is digesting the foods. So when you eat it, it's gonna be very high in digestive enzymes. It's gonna help you break down food. Remember, nature is hibernating this time. We're not really eating too much. So you wanna introduce foods that are easy for the body to digest. That so you don't have to give too much energy off to digestion. And then what? You can shuttle that energy towards immunity. You can shuttle that towards regeneration, you see? You can shuttle the energy towards your reproductive capabilities. So you want things that are easy to digest. Um, and generally fermented foods, you know, pickled foods, you know, that whole science where your ancestors, your, your family would pickle those foods. You know, this is the kind of time period where you can utilize that thing, right? that kind of um, science. Okay. Okay. And then finally, um, connecting to the earth in the winter time, what would be... Yeah your recommendation for that? So if you wanna to connect to the earth during the winter time, I would, um, one simple way you could do that, I'll give you a ritual that we were given many years ago, about five, six years ago, but I still still hold on to it to this day, is um, you can get yourself a basin of water or a basin of, well, just start with a basin of water and plunk your feet in that basin of water and stare at the moonlight, right? And as you're, you wanna see yourself, so maybe you're in your home, you have a window, you see the moon coming up, you position, or you know where that moon will be rising. Sometimes it's cloudy, you can't see it, or sometimes it's new moon, it's not out, but just learn to orient yourself towards the heavens and the moon's path. And you just keep your eyes open towards what towards the moon you allow that moonlight that lunar light you, you bathe your eyes in that and as you're looking at that you're vision you're thinking of what you need to manifest in this world i'm gonna give you all a little secret that the moon anytime you see a moon there's always going to be life around that whatever that moon is orbiting because the moon's primary function is to give forth its life-giving properties, life-giving material to that planet, right? So Earth is Earth has a moon, and what the moon is giving, the moon looks the way it does because it's given just like a mother. That's like you saw that earlier picture with the mother giving the milk to the child on the breast. That's what the moon is doing to the Earth. So anything, any Earthling seeing that moon, if you visualize the moon, in that bottle of, in that basin of water, because you know the lunar energy affects the tides, affects the oceans. 
affects the tides in us or raise the different waters, the creative energies in you. And you bring that light from the moon connected to the water. Now you have the body, the soul and this physical body able to manifest things. And that's one thing that shamans do to pull in the ability to create material within their body. So if your body needs hormones, if it needs fats, if it needs proteins, if it needs whatever it needs, it gets it from the moon, that lunar light. So I know a lot of people do sun gazing, but this is the science of lunar gazing that you can engage in. And that's one way you can definitely connect to the earth. And then if you want to connect to the earth directly even more in that water, you can just go to like Home Depot or Lowe's or maybe in your own soil and grab clay and put that clay. You don't have to put too much. Just put some clay in that water and it'll help you to materialize stronger, help you to connect to this winter energy stronger, right? You can put some clay in there. You can put some sea salt in there. And now you have yourself a ritualistic device where you're pulling like a magnet, whatever material you need for your body to thrive um, during this season. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this was, again, a phenomenal presentation. Um, everyone is like definitely would love a series. So again, please reach out. Um, your email has been placed in the chat. So please reach out to um, Emma Boise um, about his services. And I wanted to ask, do you have a cash app or a PayPal where people may be able to make a donation to you? Um, please, if you can drop that in the chat for everyone. And if you would like to make a donation as a show of thanks, for tonight's presentation, we definitely invite you to do that. I would also like to invite you out um, again every third Wednesday of the month. Uh, check out, look out for an email from IKG for our Wisdom Wednesday series. We are gearing up for the 2020, 2022 uh, year. And um, we hope to see your wonderful faces or names uh, in the audience. So I'm going to close it out. But before I do that, I would like to turn it over uh, back to you um, if you want to have any closing words. Oh, uh, I just thank everybody. I know that you could have been doing a lot of different things. And the fact that you just took time to hear me ramble, <laughs> I just truly appreciate it. Um, I do want to thank Sister Ajwa, Sister Atlantis, and Brother Tony, Anthony Browder, um, just for being just beautiful beacons in our community and having forums like this where we can gather and just spread and just be family and village and it's just it just does my heart so well so i'm just very thankful um thank you so much thank you wonderful thank you all for coming out again this program um, is available on facebook and um youtube so you can catch the replay there have a wonderful evening. Have a blessed holiday and a wonderful new year. See you all next month, January 19th, 2022. Peace. Peace.